Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today we start unit 13, J.S. Mill. And our topic is Equal Rights for Women. The subjection of women 1869 begins with the revolutionary statement. The principle which regulates the existing social relations between the two sexes. The legal subordination of one sex to the other is wrong in itself. And now one of the chief hindrances to human improvement. And it ought to be replaced by a principle of perfect equality. Mills refrained for the legal subordination of women was the mid 19th century England law of the marriage contract. By this law, married English women could hold no property in their own name. And even if their parents gifted them any property that too belonged to their husbands. Unless a woman was legally separated from her husband. A difficult and expensive process. Even if she lived away from him, her earnings belonged officially to him. By law, only the father and not the mother was the guardian of a couple's children. Mill also cited the absence of laws on martial rape to prove the inequality suffered by the English women of that time. What Mill found paradoxical was that in the modern age when in other areas the principles of liberty and equality were being asserted they were yet not applied to the condition of women no one believed in slavery anymore yet Women were sometimes treated worse than slaves and this was accepted as beyond questioning. Mill wanted to explain this resistance to women's equality in the context of a general acceptance of the principles of equality and liberty. He did so by first presenting and then defeating the arguments for women's subordination and then providing his own arguments for women's equality. The first argument for women's inequality which Mill refuted was that since historically it was, it has been a universal practice therefore there must be some justification for it contra this mill showed that other so called universal social practices like slavery for example had been rejected so perhaps Given time, women's inequality would also become unacceptable. Mill also said that from the existence of something, one could argue for the rightness of that thing, only if the alternative has been tried. And in the case of women living with them, on equal terms had never been done. The reason why women's inequality had survived slavery and 
political absolutism was not because it was justifiable but because whereas only slave holders and despots had an interest in holding on to slavery and despotism all men mill argued had an interest in women's subordination a second argument for women's inequality was based on women's nature women were said to be naturally inferior to men mill's response was that one could not make arguments about women's inequality based on natural differences because these differences were a result of socialization mill was generally against using human nature as a ground for any claim since he believed that human nature changed according to the social environment at the same time mill also pointed out that in spite of being treated so differently from men many women throughout history had shown an extraordinary aptitude for political leadership here mill cited examples of european queens and hindu princesses the third argument refuted by mill was that there is nothing wrong with women's subordination because women accept it voluntarily mill pointed out that this claim was empirically wrong many women had written tracts against women's inequality and hundreds of women were already demonstrating in the streets of london for women's suffrage further since women had no choice but to live with their husbands they were afraid that their complaints about their position would only lead to worse treatment from them lastly mill also claimed that since all women were brought up from childhood to believe that their ideal of character is the very opposite to that of men not self will and government by self control but submission and yielding to the control of others what was not to be remarked was that some women accepted this subordination willingly but that so many women resisted it the last point against which mill argued was that for a family to function well one decision maker in is needed and the husband is best suited to be this decision maker mill folded at this argument the husband and wife being both adults there was no reason why the husband should take all the decisions having refuted all of these four arguments for women's inequality mill wrote there are many persons for whom it is not enough that the inequality has no just or legitimate defense they require to be told what express advantage would be 
obtained by abolishing it the question was would society benefit if women were granted equal rights answering in the affirmative mill detailed four social benefits of women's equality the first advantage would be that the family would no longer be a school of despotism according to mill the patriarchal family teaches all its members how to live in hierarchical relationships since all power is concentrated in the hands of the husband father master whom the wife children servants have to obey for mill such families are an anarchism in modern democratic politics based on the principle of equality individuals who live in such families cannot be good democratic citizens because they do not know how to treat another citizen as an equal any sentiment of freedom which can exist in the man whose nearest and dearest intimacies are with those of whom he is absolute master is not the genuine love of freedom but what the love of freedom generally was in the ancients and in the middle ages an intense feeling of dignity and importance of his own personality making him disdain a yoke for himself but which he is abundantly ready to impose on others for his own interest or glorification in the interest of democratic citizen ship then it was necessary to obtain equality for women in the family another advantage mill pointed out would be the doubling of mass of mental faculties available to society not only would society benefit because there would be more doctors engineers teachers and scientists all women an additional advantage would be that men in the professions would perform better because of competition from their female colleagues third women enjoying equality will have a better influence on mankind under the ism of subordination women asserts their will only in all sorts of perverse ways with equality they will no longer need to do this finally by giving women equal rights their happiness would be increased manifold and this would satisfy mill argued the utilitarian principle of the greatest happiness of greatest number note some of the mills conceptual moves for instance the link he established between the private and the public unlike other liberals who not only saw the extent family as the real realms of freedom but since this freedom was mostly defined as arbitrariness this associated the family as irrelevant to larger public concerns of liberal democracy 
Mill argued that without the reform of the patriarchal family, it would be impossible to firmly ground democracy. Note that he was not merely saying that without equal rights to women, the democratic project is incomplete, but that democracy in the political or public sphere will remain shaky unless we bring up or create democratic citizens in egalitarian families. What still makes some feminists uncomfortable is that Mill insisted that the patriarchal families are an anachronism in modern society. The social subordination of women thus stands out as an isolated fact in modern social institutions. A single relic of an old world of thought and practice. Many families do now talk about capitalist patriarchy, the reinforcing of patriarchal institutions by modern capitalism. Here we want to wind up this lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.